It is uh, less is more, na. Mm. I said less is more is a very special category. We write and then delete. Yeah. All the unnecessary has to be deleted. Saat saal ke budhe ya saat saal ke jawan was the first line I wrote in advertising. Really? <laughs> Welcome to Creative Talkative with Ketki Tiwari. Yeah, we're creative and talkative. There's no stopping this. There's no stopping this. Time to explain what's in our veins, what's in our minds. Take a peek into these lives. Yeah, we're creative and talkative. There's no stopping this. There's no stopping this. Time Today on Creative Talkative, we are getting talkative with Subodh Poddar, an ad filmmaker with over 200 ad films in his kitty. He is one of India's finest contemporary artists and sculptors. Known for his unique art captures, he believes that there is no greater form of self-evolution than art. You've mentored me indirectly, but I think even otherwise, the way you live your life, the kind of things you do, I think that gives a lot of people, a lot of juniors, that courage to take that plunge and say that, "Ha, ठीक है," you know. I yeah. like youngsters. I like to interact with them. So much to learn. So much to update. With you know. I so, agree. I agree. So yeah. probably that's why I keep looking, looking for these interactions with youngsters. Right. So you directed more than two hundred ad films. About I don't remember between. India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. Yeah, maybe two okay. hundred. <laughs> Again, some of the most uh, well-known work of yours is I remember the Taste of India, Amul. Uh, Taste Amul of Taste India. of India, Nerulak Paints. Nerulak Paints. But Cameraman. then there is another one which again is one of my favorites is for washing machine, Voltas. Voltas washing oh machine. Oh my God! I think that <laughs> that was one of your. Oh, that was. That was such an amazing oh, such piece of work. Oh, such a story! Uh, Voltas had made this washing machine. Right. Seven kilos it can accommodate. Hmm. and there was some problem with the machine you know they had to sell it out it had to be sold in certain time so they wanted to stop the productions so right. it has to be a very high powered <laughs> right. creative suddenly one day i went and asked you know what does this 7 kilo means yeah huh. what is 7 and 1/2 kilos huh. so she said maybe four jeans and five sarees and two salwar kameez so i imagined all those people without Jeans and without <laughs> sarees and without house coat and without chaddis. So I draped all of them in towel, and they have challenged this woman to ye dhoke dikhao. Ha! No, no, I still remember. So that is how the concept came, you know. Yeah. So if this housewife has taken four jeans from somebody, <laughs> so ten shirts and so many pants and so many things. इसके लिए कपड़े नहीं बचे. कपड़े नहीं बचे तो सब मशीन में चलेंगे. So they are standing with the towels and they are saying, अभी dhoke dikhao. इतने कपड़े कोई मशीन में धो नहीं सकता. Right. And the housewife says, "Bilkul do sakta." So, both you say that uh, advertising has supported your life for over forty years, but then you also say that uh, you know, on hindsight, you should have probably gotten into pure art a long time ago. Why is that? Mm, when I got into advertising, I mean, when I got into art college, JJ, I did not know what I was getting into. I went into art college thinking. you know becoming a great artist big artist and then slowly got to know even the first year itself i got to know that fine arts mein ek taraf ka training hai commercial art is second other kind and if you are a commercial artist then you are getting a job so one senior student of mine who was working senior uh, friend of mine he was working with dikunas and he said subo chal ek illustration karna hai and he took me to kolaba office and it was a tiger in the tank bank of india's Illustration had to do a tiger. Mm. I did it for taxi one day. Every day I was being called for some job or the Correct. other. Okay. Now when the, the strike got over, when the <coughs> we had to go back for exams, mm. so of course I passed and uh, I scored well and went into Dekunas. So started from Dekunas. And quite late in life, you know, after a few years, I realized that there was a child in me, you know, which used to pick up. Black clay from the rice field around my school. I have And heard I this incident. At the age of six, you made your first yeah. sculpture. My, I think my eldest sister has a photograph also of me making uh, images of goddess, gods and goddesses. So that passion that I had from that childhood, I used to pick up clay and come home and make toys and statues and images of gods and goddesses. And uh, thank God, my parents never stopped me. So from that time, that child. Was doing sculptures till I was about eleven, twelve years or something. Hmm. Huh? So what happened? Then 
uh, it I lost touch Haan. as I get into advertising. Hmm. I lost touch with the art, so I I started missing these uh, uh, this passionate thing that I was about, like making clay sculptures, making paintings, making. And so that drew me back. So I took started taking time from advertising, and I start drew me back into my. Fine art, fine art, true form of art. Yeah, like true, you say. true form of art, which is which uh, which uh, which was uh, inherent in me. So when you started painting, you must have had a favorite medium. You must have had like something that was very close to your heart in terms of subjects. So what interested you the most? See, the most interesting for me was human body hmm. and the moving body. Hmm. When something is moving, and if I can capture that, that was in terms of sketches, and I was very influenced by great artist Heber and uh, Bendre, hmm. uh, Shavak Chawla. His hmm. dance paintings was a big influence in my life. So I always wanted to paint dance in life. Okay. Uh, when I retired from my work, okay. I started doing sculptures and looking for subjects. Again, I wanted to do dance in sculpture, not like regular dance. So I thought of this Mohanjadaro girl, hmm. the girl who is standing like this in the history yes, books yes. with the bangles from here to here. Yeah. For 5,000 years, she is just standing. So I said, uh, <laughs> what if I make her dance? The original Mohanjadaro girl is four inches, about this much. Hmm. It's in National Museum in Delhi. Hmm. So, four inches is too small, so I started making eight inches. Bigger one. Bigger okay. ones. This much uh, dancers in bronze, same features, same lanky uh, structure, same kind of uh, aboriginal features, and same bangles, and how she's dancing. So, I s visualized them. I first did some in terracotta. Okay. Fired them just to see how it looks. Right. That they were my prototypes. Ah. <laughs> then I found out who can do this in bronze for me, because original was in bronze. Mm. I found out, I was shooting in, in, in uh, Pondicherry once. Mm. And there I met one sculptor who had a studio in Swami Malai. Mm. Swami Malai is the place where all the bronze sculptures of, that we see in, in, in temples and in, uh, in uh, curio shops, mm. all the South Indian gods and goddesses mm. are made only in Swami Malai. I knew what so, uh, this lost wax process was and there I went and saw them working right and the process is like if you have a if you have a statue huh. to make hmm. you will make the statue first in wax oh okay huh? and wax that is semi molten you can like mold clay it. you can mold it okay hmm. so you will make attach everything in hmm. wax only hmm. so if something has gone wrong on your table there will be a fire coal fire. You can take it to the fire, it will melt Achha, and you can cut it. And then you have to cover it with clay and then leave two outlets here. Huh. So that is now covered like a football with clay, right. it will dry and then you heat it. With heating the, all the wax will mold, melt out of these two outlets. Oh, so now inside the football it's empty. I mm. made about nine sculptures in my first uh, stay about 10 days ka stay mein. Wow. Now, another wonderful thing about Swami Malai, the Kaveri river takes a turn on Swami Malai and it Achha. deposits kind of sand mm -hmm. and clay which can withstand 1200 degrees of heat. Oh. No other clay in India, no plaster of Paris, no other material can withstand 1200 degrees. And that must have been the reason of descendants from Mohanjadaro. Right. and settled here right. and they had to do some bronze work and they found this place. Your art finds its home in the homes of Atul Kazbekar, yeah, Atul Kazbekar Balki. Balki, then Kiran Devans, Anand Mahindra, Correct. Nikhil Kapoor. <laughs> Nikhil Kapoor is quite a fan of mine. Oh, is it? So clearly, you know, most of the work that I see around, dance has been a big inspiration. So I'd like you to tell me about this one incident. Something happened in the December of 1988. You were invited for an event 
which was i think 150 years of times of oh, india oh times of india where there were some uh-huh. very famous yeah. dancers who were performing yes, yes. and what i've read is that you went there and they were dancing. Somebody was sitting next to me and just took <laughs> his took invite. invite and you started uh, drawing. <laughs> My space was over. <laughs> <laughs> That's very interesting. So that was the beginning of dance skips. See like in the days when I was completely up to here with advertising. Yeah. Going insane. Yeah. So I found my sanity in these drawings, you know, right. because quick and I couldn't afford to give a lot of time to my art. I had to come back to advertising. You know? Right. So I used to find uh, these dance shows, I used to go to the theatres, dance mm. auditoriums mm. and sit in the rock audit- auditorium and look at the dance and sketch. In that moment where someone's dancing, where the pose is changing every second? Yes, I was doing this for 2-3 years and then realised that I am not getting it completely. You know, every dancer has a different body language. We all have four hand, two hands, two legs, but the way you move, the way I move is different. It's different yeah. I started learning Odyssey for four years. Really? <laughs> oh my I God. formal Odyssey for four years to know my body. And Somebody I don't think there is any <laughs> famous dancer starting that from Birju covered. Maharaj to mm-hmm. Astad Debu. You have not, like, have you left anyone out? I think you have captured Maybe all of them. I have captured most of them, all the celebrity dancers, like from uh, Swapna Sundari to Hema Malini to Mallika Sarabhai, Mirali Sarabhai. Was it ever the other way around where you were inspiring them? You know, someone is capturing us, so we better be even more graceful. Once Birju Maharaj was on stage, Shanu Khan and Dhal, I was drawing and I had one thappi of drawings. He took the papers, he saw all of them and then he said, I will sign all of them, I will give Another thing that I would like to ask you is, uh, so Western dance is very different from Indian ah, dance. So do yes, you yes. do you have a preference or do you think that uh, yes, yes. you are able to capture one yeah. better See, than the other? See, when I say less is more, ah. my trouble with Indian dance is, yahan se choti latak rahi, yahan se gajra hai, yahan par makeup hai. <laughs> so so all that distracts. Has to come also. No? Yeah, I part. try to get them, Correct. but in Western dance, it's a cleaner just a leo- leotard and only the body form. Correct. So completely different styles. So if I am not aware right. of that moment, because she is moving, no? right. I cannot capture the whole dance. I am not mm. a camera, I am not a movie mm. camera. Mm. I can capture one moment. So I have to freeze in that moment yeah. and live completely in that moment and reproduce that. So it's excellent. So, I mean, you know, this is like... So there is no past, there is no future. No. It's, it's now. It's linked to dancecapes, my Rahula, Correct. my story writing, my yeah. passion for film. You know, I've got many scripts written, but Rahula was my favorite and till now it is favorite. So I started writing about Buddha through child's eyes, mm. how this child was waiting for his father mm. and in the end the child will leave with the father. Okay. He okay. also will leave. Correct. And Yashodara is standing, you know, like, yeah. oh my God, father had gone now. So that story I built up. Right. I wrote the story, I was very happy with it. And I went to Bodh Gaya to a friend who is a historian of Buddhist history. He's a scholar of Buddhist history mm. and a historian, Dr. Uh, 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 Kailash Prasad. Mm. I went to check whether my story has got any negative points which Buddhists won't like or will create controversies. So I read out the story to them and they loved it. They said, we have not seen Buddha like this ever before. It's mm. Though it is creative, though it is fiction, but it is very nice. Monks from Japan, monks from Thailand, monks from Sri Lanka, all monks are all around and I was sketching them right. to study the fold of their clothes, to study how they sit. Yeah. And, and I saw they are sitting for hours and the moment a leaf fell from the tree, they would grab it and put it in the pocket oh. like a blessing. You know, we artists are blessed that we can see our mistakes with our own eyes. We all have to experience this here. Yeah. Writers, singers, artists, we know and we don't expose it to the world. Sorry, I cannot tell you out of 20 drawings, Mm. I may like only two. So, rejection, if I can reject myself, is a big evolution. Right. You know, so that is the blessing of, of being an artist. You know, I would like to end this lovely talk that we are having with uh, one question 
what according to you is an artist's role in our society oh i think you know art's primary role is to make happiness around with my colors with my lines you know with my music if i can make somebody happy at the end of the day i can say yes i have earned it you know so i i want to make art that is why i'm actually doing so much of dance so much of india so much of colors you know dance movements is by expression i don't look for very deep thoughts you know sometimes thoughts come into my paintings also but then they're not so deep that you know it will change a society and i think art should be very nice very pleasant when you walk into the house if you have an art piece on the wall you should be able to communicate with that art piece and it should it should say okay come back welcome back home and it's a nice home it's a beautiful house you know? so with all my art i think it should be beautification let us tell you what we want to say not about just getting paid or achieving fame it's about the everyday blood sweat and tears dreams and fears everything you got to hear listen from the first steps to the final leap making headlines in history how they did it it's no mystery take a seat honestly yeah we're creative and talkative there's no stopping this there's no stopping this time for honesty with some novelty sit down with kt you just hit the lottery Hope you had as much fun listening as we did talking. Do subscribe for updates on our upcoming episode out every Friday. Like, share and follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram as well as creativetalkative.com. That's creative with a K.